Well, I'm glad uh, to be back again this weekend. It was, uh, it was good to be uh, on vacation with my family and uh, did a little bit of, of uh, travel with my son, so glad to be back, but uh, thankful that last week uh, Luke Schmelter was able to step in and preach uh, the first part of Acts 23. Again, I said it, uh, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. I'm so grateful to have uh, such a great uh, group of folks who are able to step up and teach in my absence and to lead, and so I never have... Uh, I never have a worry about being a, ha- a need of when I need to travel or need to go somewhere, or just need time off. It's always great uh, to be able to have leaders that will step up and lead and preach and teach. Uh, one of the things that I've said often, and, I, and I've told the guys this too, the guys in the lead team, the elders and deacons here at the church, that one of the things uh, I've told my son, uh, and, uh, and I mean it and said it from, you know, I've said it for years now, that if anything should happen, to me that I would expect and desire for him to look to the other men that lead this church to say, look at these guys as an example. And so, uh, again, just grateful we've got men in this room that are willing to lead and love and serve the church and the city well. So thank you for that, Luke, last week. And uh, looking forward to uh, finishing off Acts chapter 23 this week. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open and turn them there. You want to find it in your phone, your iPad, or if you have it memorized, whatever it takes to get there. Uh, but uh, I just want to give you a little heads up here as we're going through the book of Acts. We're going to be wrapping it up. We've been going through it for over a year and a half now. We, we uh, journeyed through the gospel of Luke together and then through the, uh, the book of Acts. The intention there was to go, what does it look like uh, for God in the, book of, in the book of Luke? We looked at what does it look like for God to interact with broken and hurting, fallen humanity? What does it look like as God interacts with those that are far from him, those who are lost and lonely and confused and filled with shame and guilt? What does God look like in the flesh as he interacts with them and then as we move from there into acts we said what does it look like for his church because as luke writes the gospel of luke and then the book of acts he's writing to a guy named theophilus and he says to him in the book of acts he says uh in in the gospel that i wrote to you i told you all that jesus began to do and teach and then in the book of acts he says i want to show you what the church what jesus continues to do in his world through his people and so one of the themes that have emerged through the book of acts is looking at how the church does god's work in god's world god's way and so we wanted to just study that to learn that to grow from that together as a church and so we're going to be wrapping that up here at the end of november as we move into december uh we'll be doing a short christmas series and then looking forward to uh, uh, a new series after the new year we're going to uh we're going to eventually after the new year get into some old testament teaching but we've got some stuff we're going to address at the early part of the year that we'll let you know a little more about as we get closer to to christmas uh i want to let you know also if you're making plans uh that christmas eve uh i don't know that we have the time set just yet i know last year we did four o'clock christmas eve a service we're going to be doing it again with adventure church we do it a joint service with them over the last i don't know three four years maybe and so we're going to do that again this year just to uh let you know that that is the plan going forward so well, let's jump into Acts chapter 23. I know that Luke went 1 through 11, but we're going to pick up in verse 11 this morning. Uh, it, after, after some things happen in, in, in Paul's life, and he's, uh, he stands before the council, and he's, there's some reason for, for maybe some fear or some anxiety maybe in Paul's life. There's, he's being accused of some things. Again, we see him uh, being arrested just like was, was prophesied. And so as he's, he's, he's arrested for his own safety and he's taken into the barracks, which we said before is right off the, the temple grounds there. And, and so he's arrested for his own safety. They find out he's a Roman citizen. And so uh, Rome wants to get involved because they can't have Jerusalem be in chaos at the Passover. That would look bad for them. And so at the end of that passage that Luke read last week, it says this, the following night, the Lord stood by him, him being Paul, and said, take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to gather together in your name. We're so thankful, Lord Jesus, that uh, you love us, you care for us, that you see and you know what's going on in our lives. 
We're thankful, God, that you've left us not only a historical account or record of what you have accomplished through Jesus and also uh, through your church as empowered by your spirit, they moved into the world. But God, it's not merely a historical record. It's your very word to us, and it gives us life, God, as we as we uh, find Jesus in the pages of the scripture, as they point us to him, and as we trust him, and as you fill us with your spirit, God, and teach us the word, uh, we become more and more like him. And we're thankful for that. And we just pray this morning, God, as we look into your word, that you would do what only you can do, and that's convict us about the truth, about sin, and about righteousness. That, God, that you remind us again of our need for a Savior and confirm uh, in us again one more time, God, that Jesus is indeed the Savior that we need. I pray that that would be uh, calming, it would be a solace to our soul. For those who are in the room this morning, God, who may be anxious, who may be nervous, who may be broken. There's some in this room maybe who feel ashamed, who are carrying a weight of guilt. And I pray that today that they would, they'd hear your voice, God, that they would, since your spirit, lead them to trust you, God, and that they would learn that grace tells a better story. And they would confess those things, God, in their lives that may separate them from you, and that you would teach us how to better follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, the following night, The Lord stood next to Paul and he says, take courage. As you've testified about me in Jerusalem, you must also testify in Rome. This is a promise. Jesus just told Paul, Paul, take courage. I know there's a lot of chaos going in your life. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things that could cause you to be afraid. But don't be afraid, Paul. Take courage. As you've testified about me here in Jerusalem, you must also do that in Rome. So Jesus tells Paul, hey, I know that it feels like the world around you is crumbling a little bit. I know know that this scene may seem all too familiar to you. In fact, let's think about it for a minute. He's in Jerusalem around Passover. He's been lied about. He's been uh, hastily brought to a trial that the Israelites threw together because they want to put him to death. Sounds a lot like what happened to Jesus. And Jesus is standing next to Paul and says, all this may seem familiar to you, Paul, but it's it's going to be okay. It may not be easy, but I'm, I'm telling you, Paul, you can, be, you can be strong, you can be courageous because you testified about me in Jerusalem, you're going to testify about me in Rome. You ever had a moment like that where you just needed to hear from the Lord? Maybe it was, maybe it was something going on in a relationship. Maybe it was a health issue. Maybe it was just some anxiety or something that came into your world that, is, that turned your world upside down and you just needed to know that Jesus was with you. And maybe it was through some time in prayer, or maybe the the words of a friend, or maybe it was spending some time in the scripture, and you were just reminded again that Jesus has promised that he would not leave us or forsake us, that if indeed we are in Christ, that his spirit dwells within us, and the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is alive in you and I, and that you and I are in fact indeed never alone. You ever have a night like that? Heads on the pillow, you don't know how tomorrow's going to go. Man, I don't know how that conversation's going to go. What the do- what's the doctor going to say? What's going to happen at work? You ever have one of those nights and it feels like sleep won't come? And you're churning through, if you're like me, you're churning through every possible scenario. You ever have those nights where you're just wide awake? I told a couple of people, people this morning about a, a night that I had this weekend. Uh, our youngest daughter, uh, Emmy, who's eight, uh, in the middle of the night, crawls in and is having kind of a rough night and says, I just want to sleep in here. We're like, oh, okay. So she climbs in there and about two, I don't know, somewhere between 1.30 and 2.30 in the morning, she wakes me up like this, Dad, Daddy, Dad! Which should get your attention, right? I go, yeah, what? And she leans over me and she goes, I'm a bird. Caca! I'm like, what? What? And then she slowly lays back down, to which I'm terrified now, right? And so I don't know if you've ever had that moment. So now I'm laying in bed like this. Not a bird, not a bird, not a bird, not a bird. Please don't say it, please don't say it again. Anyway, but now I'm wide awake. And now I start thinking through a bunch of stuff, right? And it's amazing how quickly and how far your mind will go at 2 30 in the morning and i know that that's a funny example right but i know there's some things that have happened in your life that have maybe kept you awake that aren't funny 
And somehow, God's Spirit, whether it's through the Word He reminds you of, or you read the Word, or you're praying, that God brings peace to your soul. This is what Jesus is doing for Paul. In the midst
circumstance, and now the anxiety is This Jesus, this Jewish rabbi.
Okay. So here's what we're going to do. You know, can trust the past. Your
I feel like there's this promise that I'm really struggling to believe. I just don't see how God's going to make that thing true in my life. Would you, would you come and pray with someone? Bring a friend, and if you come alone, somebody will come down and pray with you. And, and again, I, I want to be clear that like sometimes we talk about or we see altar calls, and like there's nothing magical about this space. There's nothing overtly spiritual about getting up out of your pew and walking down here. It doesn't, what transforms us is our, is our humbleness to come and pray and, and to invite others to pray with us, to recognize that we have a need. And you can do that in your pew. Like if you say, Charlie, I want to pray with somebody. I don't want to come down here and pray. I'm not going to tell you, well, then God's not going to hear that prayer because it's only here. It's not the way that works. But I'm asking you, I want to give you an invitation. If you'd like to come and pray and just go, God, I'm, I'm really having a hard time holding on to this promise. Because I feel like in the night the promise was made, but in the morning the plot showed up. And I just don't know if I'm going to make it through. I want to invite you to grab somebody by the hand, tap them on the shoulder, or maybe you know someone who's going through a really hard time, you just want to come pray for them. Either way, while we sing, I invite you to pray. Would you, would you stand with me while we pray and Nathan begins to play? Father, I just want to say thank you for your word. I thank you, Jesus, that, uh, that all of your promises to us in Jesus are yes. God, that we have every reason to believe you will fulfill exactly every promise that you have made to us, Jesus. And I know that there are, there are men and women in this room who are struggling with the other shoe idea when it comes to your promises, that they may believe that, God, you'll answer a prayer for somebody else, or you've seen, they've seen somebody else set free, or someone else overcome sin, or overcome doubt, or shame. It just doesn't feel like it's in the cards for them. I pray that they wouldn't give up today. I pray they wouldn't just sit passively, but they would actively pursue you, God. I pray this morning, Jesus, that someone in this room who might feel like an insignificant voice, they need to recognize that there is no insignificant voice in the body of Christ. And I pray, Lord Jesus, this morning that if anybody has a need, and maybe somebody in this room who's just investigating the claims of Christ, would not call themselves a Christian, but have been convinced somehow today by your word that you are the Savior. And that they have a desire to confess their sin to you, God, that they would indeed confess to you to lay down their life and to be transformed by your spirit. God, I thank you that we can trust your mercy in our past, your love in our present, and God, your providence in our future. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you, while we sing, to come and pray. <laughs>